John, have you ever been in love? The first two people I fell in love with... Two? Hedge <laughs> <laughs> your bets. Thing. Different occasions, both ended with their partners telling me to stop phoning their home. <laughs> the first one was a clown. Uh, who I fell in love with when I was about eight. He opened a shopping centre near me and I was transfixed. <laughs> this guy could juggle, he could do magic, he had poems. <laughs> Clown and how old were you? Clown must have been in his late 20s, early 30s. <laughs> I'm maybe nine or ten. <laughs> I asked for a picture. <laughs> He's given me his card. He's only got his phone number on it. <laughs> he obviously wants me to call. <laughs> I left a few messages. Uh, <laughs> and one day when I phoned up, his wife picked up that bitch. This sounds like an implausible story that the clown told the police. Like, no, he was calling me. <laughs> <laughs> I like the idea of you phoning out and going, what are you wearing? <laughs> <laughs> I got the big shoes on. <laughs> it wasn't a sexual thing, it was just the love between a child and a clown. <laughs> when did you first fall in love with a woman? Uh, in Torquay, on holiday. <laughs> Took her to see Men in Black. Uh, rained on the way out, give my coat, did the whole thing. Little pity kiss at the end of the week, which, I'll be honest, I may have misread. <laughs> Started phoning. Uh, <laughs> he's not picking up the phone either, little minx. So what I did, <laughs> bought one of those school exercise books and across every line of every page I wrote, I love, and then her name. Uh, if I made a mistake, tore the page out and then I uh, posted it to her. That's not creepy, glad that's not creepy. <laughs> Symbol of commitment and grammatical accuracy. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's have a look and see whether first love is one of the most important moments in life. <laughs> most men say that when they fall in love, they can't tell if it's the real thing. I can. I have a special little indicator that sticks up. <laughs> <laughs> OK, Johnstein, what's the other most important moment in life? <sighs> People do babies, don't they? I like litter. <laughs> I think the only reason I want to have kids is so I can look at other people's without being accused of being a paedophile. <laughs> when you walk past a... <laughs> I don't mean in that word. No, just no, mean... dig yourself out of this. I'd love to see this. <laughs> he's got a shovel. On he's on, the, he's on, the, on your marks, John, <laughs> and dig your way out of that one. Sometimes you're walking past a playground. Sure. <laughs> You've stopped. He's, even, he's going deeper before he even starts the dig. <laughs> Sometimes you walk past a playground and you just want to be able to watch the abandon of children. <laughs> it's, it's like watching nature. It's like when you watch the leaves change in autumn. Sometimes you want to watch a kid on a swing and think, oh, I used to be on swings before I had jobs and before people judged me and before I wasn't allowed to be in a park. And then before, <laughs> before you know it, you've been there half an hour and someone says, oh, which one's yours? You go, I'll go then. Fine. I'm not. <laughs> It's a nice... And sometimes you a baby say, will look at you. What you should say is I haven't chosen yet. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes they look at you, though. Sometimes you're on a train... And you... Look at you! You're the weirdo, yeah? You're the weirdos for making it weird, weirdos. Sometimes you're on a train and a baby looks at you and smiles. <laughs> it's just in a way a baby would. And yet yeah. you want, as a, as a woman, if you look over and pull a face, you go, oh, it's the maternal instinct kicking in. She's just communicating with the baby. If I look over and go, <laughs> <laughs> go can yeah, someone get Captain John, Weirdo off the train, John, please? It sort of depends on whether or not you've got your cock in your hand. <laughs> Dr Christian, yeah, um, anyway. is there anything that we can do to get John chemically castrated? <laughs> <laughs> no, you haven't got kids? Absolutely no desire to have children whatsoever. Yeah, you can't... They just linger too long and they you do, can't have a they life. They do linger, don't they? Yeah. They go on living is another way to say they yeah, go they, on. <laughs> they linger. Yeah. I mean, if they lasted five years, it'd be perfect, but no. <laughs> I never wanted kids, really. I just wanted one of those big American fridges. No, they're really, really big ones. Yeah. I thought it'd be ridiculous. I get one of those. It's just me and my partner there, and like a lasagna and a lemon rolling around in <laughs> it. I thought I'd better have some kids, fill it out with yogurt. <laughs> well, I didn't think that I was very maternal until I had my baby. Isn't that a 
bit lit, though. Yeah. That's really so that's kind of fine, isn't but it? But then it was fine. No, honestly, but, you know... We yeah, were... but what if it wasn't? You can't put it back in, can you? You can't, can you? No, you can't. But see if you do have every drug under the sun. Don't... If somebody comes at you Not with whilst heroin, you're pregnant, no, I should confirm. No, 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 but in labour. In labour, have everything. You know these folks that lie on bean bags and they have candles? No. No, 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 no. You want to be numb, as God intended. You want to be numb from the waist down, knowing nothing about it until they give you that, a beautiful baby. That's conception or birth. Uh, well... I've never heard anything more Scottish than that. Take all the drugs that you can. <laughs> Seriously, all of them. Get all of them. It's brilliant. <laughs> It's like you only had the baby for the high. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it is really. Honestly, I recommend it's it. It's expensive, though. No, it it's only very expensive. Chest. Well, if they've worked out. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't cost you anything. It's like the National Health Service. No, no, you're saying having baby? children, no, not. I mean, raising oh, children. Oh, not oh, the yeah. drugs. Yeah, no, no. <laughs> 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 so I know a gay that can get it for a fever. <laughs> I never really forget, like, the day I passed my driving test. Probably the most significant. Because then you can go anywhere, can't you? Get the motor running. <laughs> I mean, it won't surprise anyone to learn that I received a minor on my driving test for excessive caution. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, ladies. It really annoyed me. You know you're a fanny when on your driving test the instructor's saying, so when I tap the dashboard, I want you to slow down, but for the rest of the time, can you friggin' strap on a pair? <laughs> and just put your foot down. I think it's, uh, it's a big, big time for, you know, teenagers passing their test. I just think it's a very strange, strange thing that uh, we pick that time in life to give kids the opportunity to drive. You know, it's the most sort of hormonally volatile you can be. So are you, are you emotionally insecure and randomly aggressive? Here, have a machine that can kill yourself and others. You know, I just... <laughs> when, when can you apply for your provisional licence? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I do drive a car, mate. I drive a Polo 1.2. It's blue. Take that. that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I drive a uh, Ford Fiesta. It's Spanish for party. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I feel completely left out. Do <laughs> you drive? I've, I've never passed my driving test. Oh. I took it once and failed it so appallingly badly, I said I'm never, ever going to drive again and haven't. <gasps> I respect you for that. I think if you fail your test three times, you should be banned for at least ten years. Uh, <laughs> People think they have a right to drive, and they're like, well, I'll get there in the end. Well, you're clearly shit at this. <laughs> you have to be told to stop now. Like, I failed six times, but then I passed on the seventh. Well, you're probably still shit. Do you drive, sir? Yeah, I passed a second time. Apparently, all the, the safest drivers are those who have passed the second time. But I drove into oncoming traffic in my first one. <laughs> But I didn't on the second one. <laughs> <laughs> but they don't teach you everything that you really need to learn no. to drive in the, in, the, in the lessons, do they? They don't teach you, like, how to balance all your snacks on the passenger seat. <laughs> open or, the crisps when you're at the services, cos it's difficult to open them when you're driving along. Yeah, but I can't open a bottle between my thighs. <laughs> <laughs> she can. <laughs> really impressive, and it's one of those gross bottles. <laughs> Stay my house, dude, for that. <laughs>